Today we'll build the driving base of Clawbot in the Robot Mesh Mimic simulation tool, and then and then drive it around. So at the Robot Mesh site, we'll open Robot Mesh Studio and use the online tool. Once the page is loaded, we'll create a new project. You may want to log in uh, and create a, a login and password so that you can save your work. For this, I'll just go straight to it. We'll create a Vex IQ Mimic project, and we'll use Controller Express so we can use the keyboard to drive it around. And we'll call it Driving Base. The page will take a minute to load. Be patient with it. And once it's loaded, we'll go to the Mimic tab and add a base tile as a reference for our, for our field. And then we'll follow the driving base instructions, which uh, I'll try to link in the comments. But we'll start right on uh, step one on page four of the Clawbot instructions. And we'll add a motor. And the one of the first things we'll need to do is, is actually hide the driving base, or the uh, base tile, because that's in our way. And we'll swing the motor around so that we can view it. And we'll add some connectors. And I have this smart tool so that we can place them. I've already placed that one in the wrong place, so we'll move it over to the correct location. That looks right. And I'm just clicking and holding in the library and moving the, the pin over to where it needs to go and it snaps itself into place. Then we'll add a beam. And one of the nice things about the beam is that we can change the length in place. So I know I added too short of a beam. I also added it in the wrong location. So I'll click on the hole I want to pivot around and then rotate it into place. If the mouse goes off of uh, the, the editing screen, it'll, it will change what, what you're spinning. So you may have to release and click and multiple times. So we need a 2 by 12 beam. So I'll make it longer. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I think that's the right size. Next, we'll go and grab a gear. And I think we need a 36 tooth gear. place the gear right in the middle of the workspace. So I will select the move tool and move it out of the way. Then we'll need a shaft and a rubber collar. And the instructions call for a think of A four long. I 
accidentally deleted the gear and undid that. So I'm going to grab the center of that gear and put it on my tooth, and then I'll make sure that it's properly aligned and that there is almost no space between it and the piece. That looks about right. And if I look at how far the shaft is into the motor, that looks about right, but we'll, we might have to correct that later. And we will do the same thing with the, the collar. That's too far in, so we'll pull it, pull it out slightly. And that looks about right. That gives us step two, so now we'll move on to step three. I need some of the two by two connector pins, which will go here all the way into the motor. Oh, I have the, the moving tool. I want to reselect the smart tool. That, look, that looks right, and then rather than grab another, I'll just clone that one. I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if I have the right piece or not, so I'm gonna move it out. Nope, I shrunk it. So I'll use the extender to make that the right size. Did I do the same thing up here? I did. So I'll use the extender there also. So now hopefully I've got the right pieces in there and I'll get a corner connector. Uh, the, the one with three holes. And I'll choose the auto smart connector to see if I can place it directly. And select my pivot point. And rotate into place. Now we can place that, and I need to rotate it around. That's what that little s switcheroo button does. And then I need a couple standoffs for the backside. They are uh, one bys. Next, we'll add the rest of the gears. Use the M hotkey to bring up the translation tool to get it in about the right place. We'll clone that again. Let's 
something's not the right size. Oh, I made too big of a gear. It's great that I can go back and resize them after the fact. Oop, I moved the wrong thing, so I'll un control Z undo that. Move my gear over. Then I'll get a small plastic shaft. I'll select auto so I can drag it right into place. And a longer six shaft. not quite in the right spot, so we'll move it. But unlike with the, when we're building with, with real pieces, with these, it's a lot easier to move them around later. So we'll, we'll try these spots, and then if we have to move them later, we can. That takes us through step uh, four, and now we'll move on to step uh, five. And now I realize I actually made a mistake here, and, and now I'm going to have to go back and undo it. Uh, it's okay, because the nice thing about the program is it's a lot easier to, to fix mistakes. So I think this piece was just supposed to go in there. Similarly with this one, uh, just just into our 2 by 12 and this piece was supposed to be in front of the corner connector. Uh, that's the nice thing about building with the tool is that it's really easy to go back and, and, and change things later. So now we want another 2 by 12 rectangular block. I'll just clone that one and then auto place it out there. And we've got our two shafts for the wheels. Uh, I'm going to pull it out a little bit, and if we have to, we'll move it back in. Notice that the shaft in the middle is just poking through this block and this block so it will hold that gear in place ah but I forgot a rubber collar on both of these so let's put that in place good that looks much better so now we can move on to step six and add the wheels. And we'll use the 200 millimeter wheel. And one thing we'll need to do is make sure we get the horizontal alignment right and and it, I put it on backwards to start, or it put it on backwards to start. So I flipped it, and now it looks like it's in about the right position. So I just need a uh, rubber shaft collar. And that looks good. It looks a lot like the drawing. There's a little bit of shaft protruding. 